we have at the very end of the slide deck uh, a trivia section. Uh, there are prizes associated with getting the right answer, and uh, the first person to chat uh, with the correct answer uh, will win a prize, and uh, we'll be in contact with those winners to send prizes. Don't give us your email. Don't worry about it. We know who you are. Uh, we will find you, uh, and we will get you your prize. <clears throat> so why are we here tonight? Um, you know, starting years ago, we began getting feedback uh, from young people that uh, they didn't feel like the brand was really engaging. Um, there was a lot of people feeling like attention homes did things to or for uh, young people. And to be quite honest, the work that we do is, is very much about doing things with young people. And so we started to explore, uh, you know, what can we do to honor that feedback from young people, from uh, community members and partners, um, and, and really dug into understanding more deeply uh, that there was a lot about how we presented the organization uh, that, that wasn't particularly engaging to people. Um, you know, we struggled with terms like at risk or in crisis to define a population of people. Uh, and that is not strength-based. It's not honoring uh, the great work that young people do. Um, it's not honoring their resilience and their, their strength. And so again, we dove deeper in uh, we, uh, I get probably between 20 and 30 a month of uh, like builders magazines. Um, and so there's this idea uh, through solicitations uh, for me to buy cheap roofing supplies uh, for the organization or the company as far as people are concerned. Um, and we had this house logo uh, that, that really sort of perpetuated some of that. And so uh, the other thing that was really challenging for us as we, uh, you know, explored opportunities in other communities and certainly in Boulder with people who didn't know who we were um, is that there was this long, very important, but long history lesson that we need to give. And what we've learned about branding is that the engagement has to be very quick. Um, and our most important audience is young people, that they see who we are and they go, I know that I want to uh, feel comfortable to go there. Um, and so while we're certainly not, and I will emphasize this throughout the evening, um, abandoning our history, uh, cause it's the most important part of who we are. Um, it made it really hard to engage people in our brand. Uh, we, we, we went into this project thinking about how do we frame it in all of these ways? Who are we? How do we do it more succinctly? How do we represent ourselves to populations? Uh, that we need to and in and, and our impact on the community and so uh, that's the why right some some really big sort of existential questions about how we represent ourselves and the population that we work with uh, that created this opportunity for us to explore uh, a branding and so you know the big ones were how do we highlight uh, most importantly the work that young people do to build self-sufficient lives uh, how do we how do we present uh, young people in a way that uh, is real and, and uh, you know, not have this, oh, you know, poor Sarah needs help. And then there's an image of Sarah at a bus stop um, in the rain with a newspaper on her head. That is not who these young uh, people are. Uh, these young people are resilient and proud and confident and strong. Um, and then We've got some really important uh, growth opportunity here, and and uh, and we believe that we can solve this problem of youth homelessness, uh, but but that it takes larger scale for us. And so, um, you know, how do we create a brand that pulls together and galvanizes communities to create these seamless infrastructures where young people can move from these places that are not working for them to environments where they can thrive. So that's the context of how we got here. I will share that uh, we did a lot of work. We did surveys, uh, focus groups. We had a board committee. Um, we interviewed creative agencies. We, I mean, there's so much human time and energy that went into this project. Um, I can't thank enough the staff and board members, the young people that contributed to uh, the development of all this and, and ultimately, um, huge shout out to Moxie Sozo, a creative agency here in Boulder uh, that helped us with this process. Um, I 
a quick tangent with them is that uh, the moment we got together and started sharing ideas and talking to them about who we were, we found this really cool intrinsic alignment uh, where where they saw the world through our eyes and could could repeat that back to us. And so it became this really awesome process where, um, you know, we had shared vision, we had shared thoughts, uh, where we really thought to ourselves collectively, wow, we could go big with this. And so, um, and so we did. <clears throat> so I mentioned earlier, I'm going to continue to mention, it's incredibly important. Uh, our history is significant. In the 1960s, as many of you know, uh, and many of you were involved in, um, there was no place for young people to be uh, <clears throat> when they couldn't be at home. And so through a partnership with First United Methodist Church, uh, Bud Holmes, a local judge, uh, a bunch of congregation and social justice members in our community, um, <clears throat> they created the mandate to provide attention, not detention, and so was born this organization. Uh, in the time since 1966, we have served over 12,000 young people, individual young people, uh, as, as, as we have watched them and walked alongside them while they find their path, their traction, their success. And so, uh, you know, our culture, our being, our values have not changed. We always want to restate them in a way that's thoughtful, uh, but the core essence of who we are in terms of being responding to what young people need in our community or communities that we are connected to, uh, very little has changed. So this year, today, in fact, uh, we changed our name to sig signal the start of our movement to end youth homelessness. It includes young people, the community partners, uh, those folks aforementioned, um, uh, as we stand united to support a world where every young person is valued and a supported member of our community. We are not changing the core services that we provide or who we are. Uh, it is just merely an opportunity to reflect uh, who we have become and who we want to be if we're going to solve these huge, massive social problems. So through the process of our rebranding, uh, yes, we are changing our name. I think many of you know that. Uh, we've created a new logo, uh, brand new messaging that includes a purpose statement, a vision statement, a mission statement, uh, re-articulated values uh, for sharing outwardly. We created a brand manifesto. I mean, uh, this is a whole shift in the way that we represent our work and those people who are so necessarily involved in that work, <coughs> especially young people. Youth and young adults are uh, significant. I want to be clear as we go through this, it's not just about here's some messaging for you. Here's some messaging for you. Um, we want to change the narrative. We want to change the entirety of how, how we do this work, uh, how we represent the work, and how we engage other people in doing this work. Um, I, I will share again uh, the importance of holding young people up not just their voices, but representing young people in imagery and in language uh, as our premier client, as our premier consumer of all of this brand information, it has to align with how they see themselves. Um, and I think that we can all acknowledge that uh, nonprofit human services agencies have done some real disservice to human beings by uh, creating this idea that they're to be pitied or that they're broken, because uh, that's not a real thing. Uh, the real thing is that um, we all need support to get through life, and those of us that have been disconnected from that support uh, need to have other places that we can find it. And that's one of the things that we do. So this is our new brand, Together. Our tagline is to end youth homelessness. I will draw your attention to the imagery of people who are happy and proud and standing strong and demonstrate resilience and joy and youthfulness. Um, it's so critical. And so uh, here, without further ado, is the video that I promised could be a little bit choppy. Uh, we'll see. I think you'll get the gist. And I want to remind you again uh, that we'll be sending it out and it'll be available on our website. It'll be available on social media, uh, et cetera. Oh. 
a lot of people think and when you are going through poverty that like you're supposed to make it out on your own. I needed help and I feel like it's important that we have a community and that we, you know, do focus on doing things together. I think we as a community and as a society have an opportunity, if not an obligation, to help young people go on to have productive, great lives. And the more we do that, the better we do for them, but the better we do for our community as well. I feel like they're a constant support and like I help support them and they help support me because we all come from rough backgrounds and just it, it's nice knowing that there's other people here who understand. Together it's about sharing the table with young people, their voices, their contributions. This is about education, advocacy, changing the narrative. We can't do this work uh, without the input, contribution, and leadership from young people. Becoming a movement together that can end youth homelessness in our lifetime. Working with these young people every day reinforces the importance of all of us coming together. Being in this apartment complex pushes me outside my comfort zone. I interact with people a whole lot more than I would otherwise. So that definitely helps. Together, the collective impact our community has on young people facing homelessness can be a positive one. This work doesn't get done without all of us wanting to see these young people succeed, wanting to see them be housed. If we uh, don't focus on doing things together, like I don't think we would be a community if we were uh, helping each other. Together is about uh, collaborative efforts, right, and partnerships. And to end youth homelessness, it takes all of us. As someone who left home at the age of 15, I have firsthand experience of how unprepared you are for adulthood. I will absolutely support anything I could do to help kids avoid the struggles that I personally had. What does being together mean to me? Being a a functional group of people that work to help better each other. For me, together means with others. It's a symbol for me at least of not having to fear being alone anymore. We can do this together. So uh, I hope it wasn't as choppy as maybe we thought it was going to be. Uh, it's such an amazing opportunity to see and hear uh, the, the perspective of these young people. And, um, you know, A saying at the end, it, it's just a, a realization that they're not alone um, is, gosh, one of the most important things that, um, we can hear in all of this is that uh, we are not alone and that we know one of the most significant uh, contributing protective factors for all of us is having uh, a tribe or a village or, or support systems and community and a sense of belonging. And um, it's just so amazingly critical um, that, that, that lands for young people as strongly as it does. And so, right, what, is, what does together mean? It means uh, all of us. It means that uh, we do better together. Um, we can only solve this problem of youth homelessness if the entire community, country, uh, is working together to do so. Um, nobody is alone and nobody should be alone. And so come on in, come into this movement, come into our programs, come into our community and make it yours and contribute to it uh, is such a strong and profound uh, and cool, I think, uh, opportunity for us. Sorry, the slides are not advancing in the way that I hoped they would. So uh, who we are, our mission statement, we are building a movement that galvanizes communities, empowers young people, and puts ultimately an end to youth homelessness. We want to live in a society where every young person can lead a fulfilling life. That's a hell of a life purpose for us, for you, for all of us together. 
Cameron nails it. I'll read this and I know you can see it. Uh, and I don't want to be that person that reads a PowerPoint, but when I found together, it was a new beginning. It was just like a new life. And I felt like I had an opportunity to actually live the life I would imagine living, which is something that all of us deserve, have the worth, and I believe have the right to. Our vision, our North Star is that we're gonna do this work and any other work that we can to ensure that every young person is valued, empowered, and safe, and we won't stop until that's our reality. Our stated values, we believe growth is rooted in relationships. We believe in wildly celebrating resilience. <clears throat> we believe there is strength in diversity. We believe in promoting youth voices. And we believe that housing is a fundamental right. And so how do we do those things for young people between the ages of 12 and 24? We provide this long list of services that includes employment help, education help, medical help, short-term housing, long-term housing, navigation for permanent housing, support and inclusivity groups, family coaching, life skills, uh, you know, all of the things that we need as human beings, um, including the fun stuff, going to the movies, doing art, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Um, we provide that. Most importantly, collectively and together, we provide this space for young people and our staff and volunteers and community members and partners and supporters, and the list goes on again, to build community. Because with community together, we can do these things. We... Uh, we undertook, and, and it's long, and I want to be clear, this is not going to be an outward-facing thing, the brand manifesto. Uh, the intent of a brand manifesto is for us to all be clear about the pillars of how we work to eliminate youth homelessness in our country. And we want to acknowledge that it doesn't end with every young person having a place to call home. It starts there. And so I want to share with you the pillars of our brand manifesto in brevity, if I can do that. For those of you that know me, I probably won't nail it on the brevity side, but I'm gonna do the best I can. We're out to end youth homelessness. We know we can't eradicate and, and uh, get rid of the, some of the root causes. We, we don't have the luxury of going into homes where there's conflict or dealing with societal issues around how people view orientation and identity. But we can imagine contributing to a society where positive and motivating systems help young people transition from these unstable or marginalized environments to positive ones immediately, seamlessly, smoothly. We'll continue to advocate for housing rights. We will work on the Hill in DC. We will work down in Denver at the Capitol. We will work at the county city levels. Uh, to ensure that the right to housing and equity is further embedded into the policies and actions of every level of the government. We'll continue to do everything we can to educate people about the reality of what are contributing factors to youth and young adult homelessness, to flip on its head this notion that young people who are on the streets are there because they have mental health issues, substance use, because they want to be on the street. Um, the reality is that episodes of homelessness are contributing factors to these things, that those things are symptoms of an experience of being on the street rather than the reason why somebody is on the street. And if we do that effectively, we can develop a country that has more compassion and understanding for the immediacy of solving this problem. You know, this is not gonna happen tomorrow, but I want you to just imagine for a moment being 16 years old, go back to your 16 or 17 year old self and you got kicked out of your house or ostracized from the community that you were a part of or your home, whatever that was to you then. And you're on the street for a few days and then you're in a shelter. And as well as we and other organizations 
do with providing shelter that's short term, it's not any place that a human being should have to be. People should be in a place that's safe and stable for them. It's also incredibly expensive to operate shelters and have these emergency solutions. So again, we're not getting rid of that tomorrow, but we can move towards an infrastructure where there is 17 year old you ends up on the streets and without experiencing the risk factors on the streets or having to spend time in a shelter, you can find a pathway to a permanent housing, safe, stable environment with a support system around you so that those things are, that are important to you, you can accomplish. And so the best way to look at this is through your 17 year old eyes and think about the disruption that emergency services or time on the street can cause in your life. And, and let's make sure that, that those disruptions don't even happen. And then again, right? Like, let's get at it together. If we do this, we can make a difference and see a change in all our lifetimes. The challenge is significant, it's dire. The opportunity was years ago, but here we are, so let's get it. Home is where the start is and from there, anything can happen. The possibilities for young people with a safe and stable place to live are limitless. We know we can't end all of the causes of youth homelessness, but we can together end the worst outcomes. Please note again, a smiling, happy young person who's proud and, and clean and, and cool and probably tells good jokes, just judging by the giant smile on their face. That's how young people should be represented and that's what we're up to. So many of you know, we have a list of programs. It, this is so much more than our programs, but part of our branding was to get really clear on what our programs were called. Um, you know, let's just take the source, which is uh, located on Broadway. Uh, over the years, it's been called Broadway Youth Shelter, Broadway House, um, uh, RHY program, uh, The Shelter. Uh, and so uh, because young people named it that, uh, both the drop-in center and shelter in that location are gonna be called The Source. Chase House is uh, residential programming, 1440 Pine, as many of you know, is long-term housing. We do street outreach, so that's a, uh, a no-brainer. And then we have a transitional living program. So there are additional activities happening under those programs, but the high-level overview and the branding of those programs is that. So what do we do? What, what can you do? Uh, join the movement. Be a part of this. M many or most of you, or frankly, I think, and I can't see who's here in the moment because I'm sharing my screen, but uh, potentially all of you uh, are already a big part of this. And so we're articulating it. And so the things that you can do immediately to help support this rebranding in the community, um, which ultimately will importantly help young people connect immediately and get connected to services, resources, and support that will help them move from the situation that they're in and the circumstances they're in to better, healthier circumstances. That's our end goal. So let's get it. Wear our gear. Uh, we will send out again a link on our website. There's an opportunity uh, for the next 24 hours for a small donation, uh, you get a whole swag bag. We will have other gear uh, available. Um, share our social media posts, go to Instagram, go to Twitter, go to YouTube where this video that you saw earlier is and, um, and share it, share it on Facebook, um, share the mission, the new brand, share it with everybody. Because the more people that know about this, the more likely it is that somebody doesn't fall through some crack somewhere when they need to connect to resources or support. Enjoy through us uh, discounts at local businesses that have partnered with us. You can find those 
Uh, it's not an all-inclusive list. We have a lot of great support in this community, as many of you know, uh, but there's a list of folks that are partnering with us specifically around the rebrand and giving discounts. Um, sign up for our newsletter so you can stay in touch with all of the work we're doing. I would not be doing my job well if I didn't also say, look, write us a check, give us some money. Uh, so donate to the work that we're doing. In some way, join this movement. So this is, this is where we're at. The first person to chat accurately uh, wins a $25 gift card to Tiaco. So chat it in. Alex will uh, unmute herself and share with us the winning person. Uh, then we will find you, just to reiterate, find you and make sure that you get your gift card. Good job, everyone. Um, so the correct answer is six, and it looks like Karen Hoskin was the first one to put in six. So we have the Source Drop-In Center, the Source Overnight Shelter, um, we have Chase House, we have 1440 Pine, we have our Street Outreach Program and our trans Transitional Living Program. So Karen, we will get in touch with you after this and send you your gift card. Boom, yay, and thanks to Yako. What age range do all of our programs serve? So uh, regardless of which program it is, what's the youngest age participant and the oldest age participant in our programs? Again, first one to chat in the correct answer. Gets a $25 gift card to River and Woods, which is an amazing spot. Oh my gosh, so many people. Um, it looks like Charlotte Lee. We serve ages 12 to 24. Congrats, Charlotte. Yay, Charlotte. We'll find you. We know where to find you. And just one reason, uh, and I'll tell you, there's not very many wrong answers here. What is one reason we decided to rebrand uh, and you get a $30 gift card to Ruthie's Boardwalk Social, which are the best grilled cheeses that I've had, uh, maybe not in my life, but in a very long time. Oh, it's so awesome seeing all of the correct responses because as Chris said, there are so many answers. And Cynthia Case had the quick, quickest fingers with youth feedback. Nice work. Congrats. We'll find you. Over the past 55 years, roughly how many young people have we worked with? Oh, it looks like everyone knows this answer. Um, but the first person that I saw in the chat is Kate Weinstein. Congratulations, Kate. All right, Kate, enjoy your peak as Taqueria. What year was Attention Homes Now Together founded? And uh, with that, you get some fried chicken. <laughs> A lot of responses. And the first person that was correct, Marnie Williams. Yay, Marnie. Yay, Marnie. Marnie, I would be disappointed if you didn't know that, considering that you worked uh, with us for, for a number of years. So uh, congrats on, on the fried chicken. Yep, it was 1966. Nice. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close the slide deck now so I can see faces. Uh, please chat any questions. I know we're making sure that we're going to try to get to everything. I think the trivia probably took up a bunch of space in the chat. Um, but there is no, there is no, uh, you know, bad question. There's no, uh, I can give a bad answer, but there are no bad questions. Um, ask anything, uh, any comments, you know, try to be kind because this is done and uh, today's official. And so, as you can see, I'm wearing the together hat. Uh, we are moving this forward uh, and, um, and we'd just love to hear your thoughts, questions, et cetera. So I'll stop sharing my screen. See all your faces. Does somebody want to help me with the chat? Maybe. Yeah, I know earlier we had a question about if we serve youth in the foster care system or help young people that age out of foster care. Ah, yes, 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 and yeah, uh, yes. Uh, so there are a lot of intersections that Together has with the foster care system. Um, one at Chase House, we are literally uh, working with young people who have been placed through the foster care system in that program. 
And so uh, that's very direct. Um, we are also uh, definitively working with young people who are exiting the foster care system. So a, a statistic for you uh, to know is that one out of three young people leaving the foster care system end up having an experience of homelessness within 12 months. So, you know, let's all get on board with saying that's not okay. And some of the work that we're doing uh, is to help young people leave that system. We do policy work, we do advocacy work, we do housing work to help people leave that system with more supports or into a more stable environment. Uh, we use the term aging out. And so often in Colorado and many other states, a young person turns 18 and they're let, let go from a system of support without other resources or supports. And so in that context, um, you know, one of the really cool things that we were able to do at 1440 Pine with the new housing development was to partner with Boulder County Department of Housing and Human Services and ensure that at least 10 of the units in that building were dedicated specifically to young people leaving the foster care system in Boulder County. And so they get to stay in the community where they've gone to school, maybe where they were born and raised, um, and uh, have an opportunity to you know, figure out how to get on their feet uh, and move towards self-sufficiency and independent living in this community. It is uh, a small, a uh, chunk of prevention uh, slash intervention work that we can do to ensure young people are not leaving those systems. And I want to include juvenile justice systems uh, into these episodes of disconnection and isolation. And so, uh, right, we've got work to do. That's why we are starting a movement because I promise you 10 units is not enough. The 40 units we have downtown at 1440 Pine is not enough. The need is considerably higher. And so, uh, we have a lot to do, and I'm going to ask you all to like buckle up because, uh, right, we we collectively uh, have a responsibility to take advantage of this opportunity better. I hope that helps answer that question. I'm loving. I do get to see some of the great. There's great feedback here about um, right that the intention of what we're putting out there and how we're representing ourselves, our community, and most importantly, once again, young people uh, is landing in the right way. Uh, it's so critical. I'm trying to read all the chat chats. Uh, just cause Ashley, it, it popped up right there, uh, the tiny home village in Longmont, can we partner and call on? Yeah, we are um, beginning soon uh, an opportunity to do outreach in Longmont, uh, working uh, with the community there to ensure that people on the streets know where to connect to services and have built relationships and trust uh, with folks that help them feel more comfortable to access those services. And so um, offline, yes, uh, we do actually have housing opportunities for, for young parents uh, that are like intact families or single parents with little ones. Um, the head of household for us uh, continues to be young people under the age of 25. So uh, let's talk offline about that more. What have I missed? Uh, so much stuff here. Someone asked about volunteer areas or opportunities. Oh, so many endless ones. Um, Mo's on here somewhere. Mo, uh, you know, helps coordinate and manage our volunteer programs and uh, is a rock star that way. I mean, look, the easiest answer to this without going into a 45 minute opportunity cell is that uh, on our website, the, uh, the chances to contribute uh, time, um, ideas, etc, are all listed there. And so I want to encourage people to check that out. I'm not trying to duck the question. Uh, in street, like street outreach programs need volunteers. Uh, I wanna emphasize again that, that connection is one of the most important things for human beings. And so being in our programs, developing relationships with people, uh, transporting folks to equine assisted psychotherapy or uh, school or a doctor's appointment or a, you know the list goes on and on and on. Um, so go on our website, explore those opportunities, connect with Mo, I uh, also uh, have to say, 
There are two things that uh, I'd love to ask you to consider doing uh, in terms of volunteering. Uh, this is for everybody. Please volunteer to spread the word about what we're doing here and the need and how important it is in our community. And, uh, and then a little more playfully, but again, have to do my job and I promise it's the last time, volunteer to write a check uh, to together uh, so that we continue to increase our capacity uh, to fulfill our mission. Uh, mostly a joke, but uh, I'm told by uh, the rest of the folks that I work with that together that I have to continue to raise money. Um, and so I'll do the best I can, always. So Chip, uh, fancy hashtags. Uh, we're gonna hashtag together. Uh, together to end youth homelessness are hashtags. Go to social media, you'll find them. Uh, there are lots of ways. Rita, thank you. You'll see that uh, some of the staff at Attention Homes uh, have Zoom backgrounds already. We'll make those available if you want them. Um, I wasn't in time uh, and it was hard to do uh, while presenting. And so uh, boo to me. Um, but uh, yeah, right, promoting this is critical. Uh, promoting it for all the reasons that uh, a movement needs to be promoted. That's how we create an actual movement and without an actual movement, uh, we're not solving this problem. And so uh, yes, together, uh, together to end youth homelessness. Uh, Alex, am I missing any other really, what'd you say, fancy hashtags, Chip? No, yeah, I just say, I just encourage everyone to follow our social media posts and use that same language if you're looking for, if you're looking for messaging and hashtags. Not too fancy, but, but pretty fancy, I guess. <laughs> so Marsha, hi, uh, it's been a minute. Uh, congrats on grandmotherhood. Um, can below together in small font be uh, the programs? Yeah, so so we do have like this complicated matrix of, of how we brand our programs under the umbrella of together so that young people um, can connect them cognitively. Yeah, it's a whole, you, you, will, you will find as, as we get more active on social media. I mean, it just started today um, that uh, a lot of those linkages are happening in the right way and on the website. Um, I think that you'll find that it's it's more clear for people how they find their way uh, to getting connected to this work, whether it's a need for resources and support or uh, a need to provide uh, support or resources to the movement. Good question. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I got a private message, but it's there anyway. Uh, I, I would like a hat. OK, uh, we can get you hats. Um, you know, for those of you that are on this call. Uh, right. This is really a uh, friends and family call. This is this is the community. And so uh, just let us know what swag you want um, and, and we'll, we'll do our best to get it in your hands. Uh, we didn't order a whole ton out of the gate uh, because we wanted to see uh, what was what. But um, I promise you hats, pop sockets, T-shirts. Uh, what do they call them? The little the cups, uh, cups, whatever. Uh, um pens, et cetera, um, coming, coming your way. Uh, we'll get you a together hat. I think it was Dan and uh, Jameson both asked that question. Sorry, I'm just filtering through also all the responses to the trivia. Um, wow, a lot of you just nailed it. That's pretty awesome. Uh, either you were paying attention or you've just been up in it uh, long enough that it's not new news for you. Um, Maybe I will take this opportunity to encourage us uh, to use inclusive language, right? Um, oh yeah, we've got tumblers, thank you so much. Tote bags, webcam covers, the list goes on and on. So one of the things that, that, uh, that we're pushing into pretty hard is to do the best we can. And it's gonna be a shift for all of us, especially those that have been in this work for a long time to move away from uh, the language kids or, uh, homeless kids or identifying somebody based on their experience. And one of the ways that um, we'll do that is just continue to remind each other and hold our, our, ourselves accountable. That um, I have not yet met uh, a young person, teenager, adolescent, or young adult who identifies as a kid. Uh, I have not yet met a, uh, a young person who identifies as homeless, at risk, or in crisis. 
uh, right? Those are not identifiers of human beings. Um, and so we just want to continue to push into and work on um, using the right pronouns, uh, ensuring that, uh, right, we're not saying stuff like kid or kiddo, as hard as that can be, um, it's honoring uh, the identity of each young person that uh, walk, walks through our doors and lives in our community. Um, we're, we're working on stuff like, uh, even we're, we're, when we're addressing uh, large groups, saying things like, hey, y'all, instead of, hey, guys, or um, hey, gang, or, you know, those kinds of things, because uh, those are not all inclusive ways to speak and uh, don't land on everybody in the same way. So um, we've got a lot of work to do. I want to remind everybody that uh, through all of our social media opportunities um, is that you can win more gift cards. Uh, I think somebody was asking the question about gift cards. Uh, that's one way to do it. Um, and, and we'll share all of that on social media and get after it. Uh, Crystal, go on, so, go on our social media and, and I promise if you're attentive, you will find out. All right, well, without further ado, that was quicker than we thought it would be. Uh, Crystal, yeah, it is, uh, go to Facebook and just look up Together. It is, it is known uh, now on social media as Together, formerly Attention Homes. Um, if you go to our website, uh, you can find uh, access to all of our social media there as well. I do wanna uh, sort of close with a few things logistical. One is uh, reach out to anybody on this call that you know, if you have questions or want more information. Um, certainly myself, uh, the rest of the amazing folks that I get the pleasure of working with. Uh, we've got members of our board of directors on this call. Um, their information is on our website as well. Should anything come up, uh, there are a lot of people who can either answer questions, uh, respond to concerns, or can direct you to the person who would be most appropriate to do so. So don't hesitate to reach out um, because, uh, right, we are all in this together and it requires that we're having communication that's open, transparent, and honest. Um, thank you, Jenny. Uh, it just popped up as, as I was saying it. Um, this is awesome. It rocks and it is the next chapter uh, in, our, uh, in our life, which I hope um, for together is a very long time because uh, we've got a lot of work to do. And, uh, and thank you, last but not least, for spending time here this evening. Uh, thank you for contributions to uh, helping support young people find opportunities to thrive in our community. Um, and we can't do this well if we're not taking care of ourselves and each other. And so I ask tonight that you simply do something that's either really nice for you, really nice for somebody else, or ideally something that is good for you and somebody else at the same time. That's what we're about. We wanna share it with you and we can't wait to see you again. I can't wait to see you in person. We will, we will uh, celebrate not just a rebranding, um, but a commitment from our community to end youth homelessness together. Thank you all very much. This will be recorded on the website. Uh, it'll be available to all of you and more to come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love.